Now we'll speak a little bit about food to fuel your skeleton. Um, what should I be eating to help attain peak bone mass might be a common question you might be thinking after hearing some of these slides. And honestly, the idea of, th the idea of there being one optimal diet is really misleading. Calcium and vitamin D we know are the building blocks of bone. They're very important for what we call bone mineral mineralization, laying down strong bones. And also how much calcium you need actually depends on age. So about 1,000 milligrams a day is actually a good goal, although we know that in adolescence at times of peak bone growth, people might need more. So what is 1,000 milligrams a day? How can you quantify that if you're going to the supermarket or looking in your refrigerator and thinking about what to eat? So we'll go over all that a little bit more, but basically I would break it down into dairy products versus non-dairy products. And it's also important to know that the timing of when you consume this calcium is key. And additionally, there are other factors in terms of how the body absorbs calcium that should be kept in mind. So having excess caffeine, having excess phosphorus from a lot of soda, having a high salt diet, all of these things will decrease the calcium absorption. So even if you are consuming the 1,000 milligrams, your body might not be absorbing it. This is just a brief idea of what some calcium rich foods are. So I have the dairy foods on the left. And as you can see, products that have dairy in them tend to have more calcium per serving than non-dairy, which is all the way on the right. Um, so for example, one Greek yogurt has anywhere from two to 300 milligrams of calcium, or kefir, which is a drinkable yogurt, tends to have about 300 milligrams of calcium in an eight ounce glass, whereas broccoli, which is very healthy for you, in one serving only has 60 milligrams. So that's important to keep in mind as well. There are, however, some great non-dairy servings of some great non-dairy sources of calcium, such as salmon, sardines, collard greens. We also have this middle category here that we labeled here as fortified. So this means that calcium is added to the food. It's not a natural product of the food. Almond milk, you could buy fortified orange juice that has calcium added, tofu, oatmeal, and some cereals. A little bit about reading labels, which I know we'll discuss in more detail later in the webinar. So there's a percent calcium that's recommended based on a total daily requirement of your 1,000 milligrams. So let's say you see here on this yogurt that I picked, the calcium on the bottom says 30%. So here what the 30% means is that one serving of this yogurt has 300 milligrams of calcium. A little bit about calcium supplements. So we really recommend trying to get calcium from dietary sources as much as possible. And we recommend using supplements if you feel like from your diet you can't get to the 1,000. So we add the supplements to a diet that is rich in calcium, or at least an attempt at trying to be rich in calcium. And the supplements, unfortunately, are not FDA regulated, which makes it a little problematic because you can write almost anything you want on a supplement for what's in it, and there's not a regulatory body like the Food and Drug Administration to really verify what is in the supplement. But we do have something that comes close. It's called the USP Verified Mark, and that stands for United States Pharmacopeia. This is um, a little bit of like a, an external validity for what you're buying in your supplement, and it gives us um, a chance at assuming that whatever calcium or whatever nutrient the substance claims it contains is more valid than a substance that doesn't have this USP label. Additionally, the kind of calcium you buy matters as well. The two most common kinds of calcium supplements are calcium carbonate versus calcium citrate. And the calcium carbonate tends to be absorbed better if there's food in your stomach, so you have to take it when you're eating, whereas calcium citrate can be absorbed whether there's food in your stomach or not, so that can be taken at any time of day. The calcium amount in these supplements is also a bit tricky because elemental calcium per serving is the actual calcium in one serving. And sometimes to find this information, you really have to look at the fine print on the label. At any one time, our body can only absorb about 500 milligrams of calcium. So taking multiple calcium supplement pills at once is likely not going to be as helpful as you may think because your body will just urinate out the extra calcium that it does not absorb. In terms of vitamin D, so we recommend getting vitamin D about four to 800 international units a day. The goal level of vitamin D, if it's something your doctor measures in your blood, is 30, although there are some scientific and medical organizations that feel 20 is sufficient. We know that with vitamin D, too much is not always a good thing. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, meaning that if you take too much, it gets stored in your body fat, and it can lead to medical problems like high calcium levels and kidney stones. We do get vitamin D from the sun, but unfortunately, because of the thinning ozone layer, the sun has now also been associated with higher rates of skin cancer. So we no, no, no longer recommend prolonged sun exposure. We instead recommend getting vitamin D either from a supplement or there are a few dietary sources. There are good sources of vitamin D, including certain fatty fish. Vitamin D is also added to some dairy products and cereals. 
and like I mentioned, the vitamin D supplementation. There are a few other key nutrients for bone health that I'll briefly mention, vitamin K, magnesium, and potassium. And as you can see, these are present in many foods.